Let's talk about the wrists in the golf swing. Now this is super important. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I want to make this as much about you as possible. I did a poll recently on YouTube asking you what you'd like to see a video on. You can see the results here, what the wrists do in the golf swing got voted number one. And I would agree with that. It's super important. We're gonna go through why that is the case today. Now we're gonna split this video into three different sections. We're gonna look at what the wrist should be doing from setup into the backswing really important. We're gonna be looking at what the wrist should be doing through impact. That is often something that people get wrong. And then the final part, uh, exercise and a drill, which everybody should do. I absolutely love it. And it is gonna change the way that you think about how you play the game of golf. Let's go through what the wrist can do. They've got two movements, only two movements. If I was to sort of set myself up here, hold my lead forearm. In fact, I'll do it in a slight angle so you can see. My wrist, my left wrist, and obviously my right wrist will do the same, can do this, okay? You can see how my fingers are sort of changing where they point. I have that moving to my wrist. The other movement I have is this. It's the only thing that my wrist can do. Can't do anything else. I've got myself a six iron here. Let's take a setup. And you know, when I take a setup, notice how my left wrist has got a significant amount of cupping in it. If I took it off the club, you can see how the back of my forearm, and the back of my wrist is not flat. There's cupping there, okay? And what we're looking to do as we move from setup to backswing is we are looking to, number one, set the wrists. So that was this movement here, looking to set the wrists. And that will give us pretty much this sort of 90 degree angle here, give or take, okay? And as I do that, I want to try and take that shape that was in my wrist, this sort of cupped position here, and I want to flatten it. So you can see here from that camera that that wrist, compared to my forearm, is now flat. So when I go from setup to backswing, I'm looking to do two things. I'm looking to add in some wrist set, and I'm looking to flatten my wrist. And as I get to that point there, both of those have been done. Now, the earlier in the golf swing things happen, the less speed is involved, and it's generally easier to do. So I'd be looking for you to rehearse, taking a setup. Can you get left arm level with the ground with pretty much that 90 degree wrist set there and the back of my wrist and the back of my forearm flat? So what have I done effectively there? Well, by using the wrist this way, I've created some leverage. That gives me the option to create more speed, more power down an impact. And when we look at flattening that wrist, what we're actually doing is we're controlling the club face. As I go to a more cupped position in my wrist, you can see how that affects the club face. If we quickly look at impact, that will tell us why we need to do that. Notice there's some cupping in my wrist. If I went to my impact position, notice how that wrist is now flat. That's enabled me to deal off the golf club a little bit, which all great players do, but yet keep it pointing at my target. So if we want this wrist to be flat at impact and it's cupped at setup, at some point between setup and impact, we've got to flatten it. Why would we try and do that in milliseconds in the downswing when we can do it in the backswing? So the first little exercise I'd love to have you do is just hit some shots doing that. So you're gonna take a setup. I'm gonna go halfway back. Have I got my wrist set? Yes. Have I flattened my wrist? Yes. That's my halfway back position. Look at the ball and then just go ahead and swing through. And you know, I say this all the time in these videos, when I hit those shots, I'm not looking to hit a perfect shot that goes full distance. I'm just looking to create what potentially for many of you might be a new position, a new feeling, try and get your head around what that feels like and try and put some context. When I say context, there's a ball, there's a shot. Doing it at home, is one thing, but there's no context because there's no outcome. So doing it with a ball is really valuable. So now that is your backswing in order. You have created some wrist set. You have flattened out your wrist. What are you going to do in the downswing? Well, we kind of need to undo some of those things that we did in the backswing. If I took my setup and added in the wrist set just at the start, that would be sort of this movement here. You can see how the club rises up. So going back, we've said that it's important that we create this wrist set. But as I come down, if I never got rid of that, the club would never reach the ball. So I have to undo that wrist set. That's super important. And over my years coaching, I've spoken to and, and helped and worked with so many golfers who have this idea or this concept of lag 
believing that lag is you know, this angle here, and they're trying to hold that for as long as they can in the downswing. And if that's you, if you are trying to hold that angle for as long as you can, it's really common to get to a position where the club is too high and too far outside the ball at this point. And then you start to push the thumbs down to the ground far too late. And as that happens, the golfer often kind of jumps and it can feel like you're getting a bit stuck and you feel like you're in your own way. Club swipes across the ball, really not efficient. So wrist set is effectively, what we've said in that first section is me, taking my thumbs and moving them more up towards the sky. So the opposite is actually taking my thumbs and pointing them down towards the ground, or in this case, the ball. So in my downswing, I want to be taking my thumbs and I want to be pushing them down towards the ground. That's undoing that wrist set. And if you can do that and time it well, it's really gonna help you deliver the club on a pretty efficient path. And especially if you're someone who's looking to reduce the out to win path or stop an over the top move, actually allowing your thumbs to work a little bit more down towards the ground earlier in that downswing can actually be a really, really good thing. Obviously, I'm not advocating that we kind of throw the club out this way with no body turn, but if done correctly, really, really powerful. So we know that we need to undo the wrist set. That's gonna help you. But the one that so many golfers get wrong is this movement here. What have we done in the backswing? Well, we've taken our wrist from a cut position and we have flattened it. Many golfers, many great golfers, actually go slightly further than that and actually create a slight arch or a slight bow in that wrist. And that slight arch and that bow would still be present at this point in the downswing. So my lead wrist is slightly arched here. Now, if we look at those great players and we look at them sort of post-impact and we get them through to round about here, what do we see that left wrist doing? Well, you can see how it's now very, very cupped and almost as cupped as I can have it. So cupped here, arched here. Why is that important? Well, have a look at this. This is a video of me throwing a Frisbee. Now, I'm not suggesting it's the best technique ever. I'm certainly no Frisbee thrower. But for me to throw that as far as I can, look at what my wrist does. For me to throw that Frisbee, I arch it going back. And then as I rotate my body, I do two things. I fling my arm off my chest as I let my wrist go from this arch position to a cupped position. My arm is moving off my chest and my wrist is doing this. Why do I do that with a frisbee? Well, it allows me to create speed. Why would you do that in the golf swing? It allows you to create speed. And it also allows you to create some height on your shots. So if you want to hit higher, softer landing shots that go further, it's almost like the holy grail, isn't it? Hit the ball further and with more height, that's what you need to do. So a little exercise would be, just doing that without a ball. Down to here, I'm feeling that my wrist is slightly arched, and then I'm gonna go through into this position here, and you can see how my wrist is now cupped. Now, we don't want that to happen here. Clearly, that's not gonna be good. I've got my cupped position, and you can see how the hands are delivered back. Timing here is everything. If you can do this and land the club target side of the ball, that's key. Because if you land in the club target side of the ball, it means that you've got the handle forwards and that is so important. So if I hit a little shot here and show you just what I mean, my wrist goes flat. I'm going to actually slightly arch it so it's almost bowed at this point here. And then as I go through, I'm going to let it release. And you can now see how it's very, very cupped. That wasn't a full swing, but it actually went dead straight and I struck the ground after the ball. So many golfers are trying to keep this wrist flat on the way through. If that's you, you're robbing yourself of speed and you're robbing yourself of height. That feel can be good for some golfers. And I've seen it work wonders for some golfers who release the club early. And I will certainly advocate, you know, drills where we're trying to hold this position. But the key thing is that's a drill. It's a drill to help a golfer correct the right feels and impact. The reality is when we're trying to hit shots which are high speed, good distance, good trajectory, this wrist has to go from bowed to extend it in order for you to do that. So if I go ahead and hit one now at full speed. So what is that one drill that I said I would suggest all golfers do? Well, there's two things that you want to be doing, or you should be doing if you want to improve your golf. Working on technique, that's important. Improving the things that we've spoken about, making sure our technique is sound and solid, it's absolutely gonna help. But the other side of it which gets neglected is the skill acquisition. 
great golfers have a high level of skill. What we said at the start was your hands, your wrists can change that golf club and make it do lots of different things. So you can see I've got a golf ball. I'm aiming down the middle of the fairway. I'm gonna hit four different shots here over a very short distance, but I want to show you the difference in the ball flight. So I'm taking a normal setup for all of these shots. I don't know if my body kind of got in the way there, but very, very low, okay? What about if I was to do the same thing, but this time, Gonna try and hit it higher. Much higher ball flight. Okay, and then I could take a setup where the club face is square, and I could easily, if I wanted, hook the ball left into the trees. Okay, notice how to hook that ball. I kept my wrist flatter, I rotated my forearm. And then the last one, I'm sure you can guess where we're going with this. Normal setup, leave the face open and we get the ball going right into the ferns over there. I hit all of those shots and I was able to control the trajectory, high and low, the direction left and right. I was doing that through skill. I did not change my setup. I did not change my backswing. But what I did do is I changed how I was delivering the golf club through impact. I was basically using my wrists and my hands to make that club face arrive at the ball in the way that I want it to. And that made the ball do what I want it to do. That's skill. If you're simply thinking your technique is the only way you're gonna get better, you're missing a whole part of the golf swing that can be unlocked. Developing skill is super important. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're gonna say, Chris, I'm not good enough to do that. That's why you should be doing it, because everybody who does this exercise at some point wasn't good enough to do it. But the more you do it, the more you think less about technique and just think about positioning that club face differently, making the ball do different things, you'll start to develop your skill. And if you can develop your skill and improve your technique, wow, that is a really powerful way to become really, really good at this game.